Hi guys, a very happy new year. I hope everyone is doing great. This is the very first video of our ACT course for competitive programming. And in this video, we're going to talk of mathematics for CP. So I've broken this module down into three modules. The, the first one being number theory, the second being powers and modular maths, and the third being combinatorics. Although it was, it was possible for me to combine all of these three into a single video, but then it might become a bit uh, overwhelming for you, which is something I definitely don't want. Hence, this uh, module has been broken down. And today we'll be only studying uh, number theory. In the description of this video, you'll be able to see some resources and uh, a, pro a few problems that you can go through. So as to have a better level, a better understanding of uh, this particular topic, that is number theory. So let's look at the topics that we're going to solve. So the first topic is divisors. The second is primes in primality testing. The third is sieve of er Eratosthenes. The fourth one being GCD and the fifth one being LCM. So these are all the topics. Apart from this, I'm pretty much sure that you would have studied divisors, primes, uh, like what are primes and GCD and LCM in your uh, high school mathematics. So it's not something that is too hard. But again, it would be uh, good to have an overview and good to understand how do you, how do you even use these concepts into coding. So with that, let's get started. So I'll be going from the very basics. So in case you already know this, then probably you can skip a few minutes or you can fast forward the video. So let's talk about devices. What are devices? As the name uh, states, devices is anything that divides a particular number. So let's say there's a number eight. Its devices would be uh, one, two, four, and an eight, right? Uh, similarly, if the number is 12, the devices would be one, two, three, four, six, and 12, right? So these are all the devices of 12. These are all the devices of eight. That's pretty easy. But now what we want to understand is that device is cool, but what do we mean by prime? So basically prime is any number which has only two devices, exactly two devices. And the two devices would be one and itself. So let's look at su such numbers. For example, two, right? So two has two devices, one and two. So it has, it clearly has two devices. It's a prime. What about three? Three also has two devices, one and three. It's also a prime. What about four? Four has three devices, one, two, and four. It's not a prime. Similarly, five is a prime because it has two devices. Six is not a prime. It has four devices, one, two, three, and six. Right. So anything that just has two devices is called a prime number. And all the other numbers are called composite numbers because then they have more than two devices. But there's a special case and the special case is one. So one is said neither to be a prime nor a composite number. This is a special case that, uh, that you need to remember. Right. So this is the basic definition of prime and composite numbers. Now let's talk about if I give you a number n, right, n could be anything and you're supposed to tell me whether it's a prime or composite number, how would you do that? So you can say that, okay, if a number is prime, that basically means it won't have any devices. So you can do a loop from two to n minus one, right? If any of these numbers actually divide n, then it's a composite number, right? Else it's a prime number. I hope that's pretty easy to understand or it's just the common sense. So let's try to code this thing up because we are going uh, gonna make a very easy uh, easy way. So let's try to understand everything. So let's say my number is num. Let's take it from the user. And then we can say that, okay, we are gonna go from two till num, right? And let's firstly assume that the number is prime. So I'm gonna take a Boolean that is prime and let's set this value to true. But now, if the current number actually divides num, right? So if num is completely divided by i, so what's this, right? So this or the percentage sign you can say, this is called the uh, taking the modulo. So what essentially I'm doing over here, I'm asking my system to return me the remainder that occurs when we divide num by i, right? So let's say the num is 10 and the i is 3. So the remainder left by dividing 10 with 3 is 1. So it will return as 1. But in case it returns zero, that would mean it's perfectly divisible by uh, i, right? So that's what we are checking over here. Like the, if the remainder is zero, then it's a perfect match or it's a, it's perfectly divisible. In that case, we can say that the number is not prime. So prime is false. And also one counter example would be sufficient. So we can break this uh, loop over here itself. And over here we can say that, okay, I don't want any sentence. Okay, if prime, then we can see out of prime. Right. Else we can see a, a composite. I hope that's pretty much clear. That's easy to understand. 
let's try to run this so in my input i'm gonna give a number that is firstly prime let's say 13 let's try to run that yep it's showing prime let's take a composite number let's say 14 14 is being shown as composite that's also right right let's take another number that is maybe like 124 that's an point what about 123 123 is again uh, comp uh, is again composite because it's divisible with three clearly cool so i think this uh, piece of code is working fine let's try to understand how many computation would it take so basically you are going through every number from 2 till n right so it would be order of n like let's say if there are, uh, there are 1000 uh, like your num is 1000 then it's going to take around 998 computations so it's somewhat uh, related to n or it's uh, of the order of n right since we have not talked of uh, complexity analysis yes, uh, yet or the time uh, time space complexity analysis hence i'm not digging a, a lot deeper into that but still it's able uh, it's easy to understand that it would be having a complexity of order of n now what we want is that we want to reduce it right so how can we reduce it let's look at uh, easy observation here so let's take one of the numbers that we took over here for example 12 right so let's take 12 over here now what are its divisors it's one it has two then three then four then five sorry not five but six then twelve right now one is a divisor of twelve but what multiplied by twelve is uh, what multiplied by one would give us a twelve one multiplied by twelve is a twelve right so let's try to club these values so i can say that okay one needs to be multiplied by twelve in order to get a twelve similarly two needs to multiply it with a six in order to get a twelve and 3 needs to multiply it with a 4 in order to get a 12. Also, if you see clearly, then the first number is getting multiplied by the last number. The second, uh, like the second number is getting multiplied by the second last a divisor and the third is getting multiplied by the third last, right? Also, if I draw a midline over here, this would exactly be root of 12, right? That's easy to prove because again, a root of 12 into root of 12 would actually be root of 12 squared and that would give us 12 right so what i want to say is that if we draw a line in the very middle this would be root n or root 12 in this case right so all the numbers to the left of it need to be paired with a number to the right of it in order to uh, in order uh, in order to come up with the value 12 or in the other uh, or the other way around all the numbers to the uh, right of it would need to pair with the number to the left of it in order to uh, have a value n right so using this fact, what I can say is that in order to test the prim uh, primality or in order to test if an, uh, how many uh, devices it has or if the number is prime or not, I don't need to uh, traverse the entire range. I don't need to go from 2 to root n, right? Or oh, Sorry, I don't need to go from 2 to n. Rather, I can just go from 2 to root n, right? And in case there's no divisor in the range 2 to root n, in that case, there would, won't be any divisor in the entire range 2 to n. I hope this makes sense. So let's try to code this up again now. Also, what's the inverse of a root? Like instead of taking a root, you can always take a square, right? Like you can take the square on the other side. So instead of saying that, okay, I want a square root of this, this will obviously work. But instead of saying this, you can obviously say that i into i is less than or equal to num, right? And you notice the equal to sign over here. The reason is that there are numbers that are perfect squares. So perfect squares are those, uh, you know, perfect squares are numbers like 16, 4, which actually have a square. So if I say that the number is 4, so it has it's a perfect square because 2 multiplied by 2 is gives us a 4, right? And if we apply to the same logic over here, so we'll say that, okay, I need to go from 2 to what value? So we need to go from 2 to root of 4, that is again a 2, right? So basically going till root of that particular number is important. We can't stop before that. So we're going to do that and we're going to have the same logic again. Rest, uh, everything would uh, would remain the same. Let's try to run this again. Yep, it again works fine. Let's try a bigger number now. Now there's a very famous number in uh, CP. That is uh, one, 1 in 9 plus 7 or you can say 1 followed by 8 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and a 7. This is a prime number. This should work else we have miss something up yeah it works fine so yeah the logic seems good to me and the complexity of this particular algorithm has now been reduced to order of n because if you look over here then we are just 
traversing till root n right earlier we were traversing till n right so we have reduced the time complexity from n that's the notation or to represent the order or the complexities we have reduced from order of n to order of root n so good job here and that's pretty much all you'll need to know about primes and uh, divisors so with that we can move ahead now so what's the next topic the next topic is a uh, sieve of eratosthenes so what's this now so now let's say you already know this particular algorithm that we just wrote right you already know this algorithm however i keep giving you queries right so i ask you that okay tell me the prime uh, like tell me if uh, 10 is a prime number tell me if 13 is a prime number then tell me it's, if 200 is a prime number so on so forth every time you are going to perform a uh, perform a operation that would incur order of n cost so i'm going to just assume that all the numbers i'm going to give you is of the order of n so you are going to perform maybe like q q uh, i gave you q queries so you're going to perform order of n for each of those queries and your overall time complexity would become order of q root n so for simplicity i can just say that okay i'm going to give you maybe like n queries so your overall time complexity would become order of n root n now what we want to do is we want to reduce this right so n root n is fine but we want to reduce this further so what we can do now we'll say that uh, this one thing we can do that will not traverse it in the same fashion so right now what we were doing is that we are picking up a number n we were checking all of its divisors right so we were saying okay a1 is a divisor then a2 is a divisor a3 is a divisor a4 is a divisor so on so forth but maybe it's time that we don't do it this way right what else we can do so we can say that okay we are going to pick up a number a1 and we are going to firstly check that if it's a prime or not now how we going to check that we'll cover that don't worry about it but if a1 is a prime right then all of its multiples that would be 2a1 and 3a1 then 4a1 so on right all of its multiples would at least have a1 as a factor now i'm assuming over here that a1 is actually greater than equal to 2 right we are not taking the case of a1 equal to 1 so all of its multiple would actually be composite so i'll go for all of its multiple and mark them right i'm going to mark all of these multiples right similarly i'm going to talk of the next element or more generally let's say i firstly start with 2 so i'll say that okay 2 then 4 then 6 then 8 then 10 then 12 then 14 so on so forth are all composite numbers then i'll come to 3 then i'll say that, okay 3 is comp uh, 3 is also prime this is also prime this is fine 3 is also prime so i'll say that okay uh, 6 6 has already been marked a composite so not required but anyway 9 then 12 then 15 then 18 these are all composite numbers that is also fine now we'll come to a 4 but as soon as we come to a 4 we realize that it has been marked as a composite number so it's not a prime so we can skip this then we'll come to a 5 we'll say okay 5 is also prime number so we'll start with 5 we'll go 5 10 15 20 20 25 and 30 so on we'll come to 6 but we'll see that okay 6 is already marked prime so we need not do that so we'll skip this so we already skipped right now we skipped 4 and 6 then we'll come to a 7 then we'll say that okay 7 14 21 28 35 40 but wait why is this even beneficial so if you think about it then for the for 2 you need to have n by 2 operations because number of, of factors or num numbers that are actually divisible by 2 are n by 2 for 3 you'll have n by 3 operations for 4 you'll have n by 4 so on so forth right if you sum it up it actually gives you a complexity of order of n log n right so in order of n log n time you are able to predict what all numbers are prime and what all numbers are composite you can save this information in any array and when the user asks you or the pro uh, like if the computer or the client asks you what if this number is prime or a composite you can just return true or false based on whatever values you have saved now is there a way to make this even faster like n log n is great is there a way to make it even faster is this one thing so right now let's say you started checking for x right so let's say x was a prime number so you started checking that okay 2 into x 3 into x 4 into x uh, like you started marking these numbers as composite but it wasn't required now let's say why 
so if you have come up till x right so you have already traversed all the numbers from 2 to x minus 1 right so if you have already traversed all the numbers from 2 to x minus 1 then obviously 2 into x like you have all uh, obviously covered all the multiples of 2 so 2 into x would have been covered similarly 3 into x would also have been covered all the way up to x minus 1 into x would have been covered right so you didn't actually need it you could have directly started from x into x and go you know proceeded ahead with it so if you modify your algorithm in such a way that for a prime number x right you start marking all its multiples starting from x into x if you start marking all the multiples starting from x into x as prime or oh sorry as composites then your complexity reduces and it reduces to n of log log n now people weak, uh, weak with mathematics might feel that n log log n seems to be a bigger quantity because it's a log n into a log n but it's technically not a log into log n like it's not a log n into log n it's log log n and it's much faster than n log n you can uh, read about a proof if you want but that's not something we are going to dive into over here but cool we can definitely try to implement this this is not a big deal like it's not too hard to do this so let's try to do, uh, do this over here itself let me clear up the code right all right uh, let's take a smaller value because i just want to print all the values so let's say we're just talking of the first 15 values right and let's consider a array and let's call it c let's make it bool right because initially okay rather we can just take a vector that way initialization would be easy so vector bool c and its size is size and all the values initially are one because we are assuming that all the numbers are prime right but we also know that one is not a prime right and zero and one is not a prime so let's mark them as zero right now we'll start our loop from i is equal to two till the time i is less than sz i plus plus right now what we'll do is that we'll say that your j is initially i into i because we already said that checking all the multiples lower than i isn't worth it right so we'll directly start checking from i into i we'll go till z and we'll do a j plus plus not a j plus plus but every time we are just we, we just want to check the multiples of i so j plus equal to i right and all these numbers can actually be marked as composites right so okay c of i equal to zero so it sounds good also one more thing over here i said that if a number is already composite then you need not mark it mark it right because that would have already been computed in case i didn't let me just uh, take you over there okay so the point over here is yeah right over here we talked about that if a number is composite then we need not check it right because all its uh, multiple as uh, multiples would have already been covered by its devices hence we need not check it so that's exactly what we are doing over here so if your c of i is equal to zero that means if it's a composite number then just continue so this was because it's just uh, okay not a c number but a composite number right. and yeah that's pretty much it now let's try to understand if our values are correct let's try to print the values from maybe like one till size okay so we are going to print the number and if it's a if it's a prime or not c so uh, basically a zero over here would be in a composite and a one would be in a prime let's try this out okay i messed up somewhere okay yep let's try to run this okay so it says uh that's fine give me a second all right the problem's right over here it had to be j right right we are checking that all the multiples of i that is being denoted by j they shouldn't be prime right so we can say c of j is equal to zero let's try to run this again fine now i think the results are good so it's saying that one is uh, one is not a prime that's correct then two is a prime then three is a prime then four is not a prime that's also correct five is a prime six is not a prime seven is a prime eight is not a prime nine is not a prime ten is not a prime 11 is a prime then 13 is a prime i guess all these values are correct and the benefit is now what you can do is that you can technically make this uh, have a size you know 
maybe like a million or something and then the number of queries you are going to get so you guys just okay so you can just have a loop like for all the queries so let's denote it by q and then you'll accept the queries by the user so val and you'll accept it and then you can just yeah you can just check that if your c i is equal to zero then you can just print a composite right else you can just print oh fine yeah again messed up the numbers it's it should be over here it's not i but well right yeah so uh, with the season of error tosthenes this is how easy the things become and the complexity actually reduces so we are mostly covered now we are left with two topics that is gcd and lcm and this is again school level mathematics so what's gcd gcd is basically the greatest common divisor greatest common divisor right it basically is the number as the name states whatever greatest divisors two numbers have right so for example let me take two numbers one is 12 the other is 18 it has two i'm not considering uh, like two uh, one over here so it has 2 3 4 6 and 12 it has 2 3 6 9 and 18 right now which is the greatest number over here the greatest number over here is definitely 6 right which so greatest number which appears at both the places which is definitely 6 right so you can say that 6 is the gcd one more interesting thing is that you can represent so this is not something i had already written but it just came up so i'm just telling you all that's common sense but any number any number x can be written in the form of p to the power x or sorry p to the power a just ignoring x over here because x is the number itself so not uh, don't want to mess up the uh, mess up the variables p to the power a q to the power b r to the power c here and so on right here p q r up uh, up to whatever num uh, whatever uh, correct you want to make it would be the prime numbers and a is the powers for example if i just want to represent 12 right so let's divide it the uh, divide it with the first prime number we have so 2 that would give us a 6 then you get a 2 again like that would give us a 3 and then you get a 1 so essentially i can say that it's 2 into 2 into 3 right or i can represent it as 2 square into 3 right so in this way i can always represent any number right so back to the topic so yeah gcd is pretty clear to us right and how do we calculate the gcd so in order to calculate the gcd either you can use this approach and there are other formulas as well that you can definitely google up but right now i just want to tell you what gcd is that i already told and what's lcm so lcm is lo uh, lowest common multiple right so as the name states it's the lowest value at which both the numbers becomes divisors so what does that mean like that's pretty gibberish right so let's say one is 12 other is 18 that these are the two numbers that we actually took for taking the gcd right so we can say what is the shortest number or what is the lowest number for which both 12 and 18 are divisors right so let's try to understand it but there is also a trick so you can say just say 12 into 18 divided by whatever their uh, gcd was so that was 6 right so you can say that, okay this will cancel out and it will give us a 36 so 36 is the lowest number for which both of these numbers act as the divisors because 18 into 2 is 36 12 into 3 is 36 so you can say 18 is also a divisor and 12 is also a divisor there won't be any number that would be less than 36 which would have both 18 and 12 as its divisors now how do we come up with this so there's a very basic formula that states that lcm of a comma b right is equal to a into b divided by gcd of a comma b right so this is something we understood so from here one thing is pretty clear that if i know a and b right and if i know lcm or if i know gcd then i can calculate the other value so for example if i know ab and i know the gcd then it's very easy for me to calculate the lcm i'll basically divide the two or if i know gcd or sorry if i know lcm then it would be very easy to calculate the gcd right but is there an easy way to calculate the gcd yes there is you can definitely write your own custom algorithms over here but c++ is generous enough to give you a function for that so let's say i have two numbers that is a is equal to 10 right and b is equal to 20 right 
and let's say i want to calculate the gcd so gcd is simply gcd uh, underscore underscore so just don't mess it up over here underscore underscore a comma b right and then you will have the value of your gcd let's try it out yep so the gcd of a and b definitely would be 10 because 20 is a proper multiple of 10 let's take another value let's take 15 or 16 Okay, so for 16, it becomes 4 because 4 is the greatest common divisor of both the numbers. Let's take eight, uh, 18 for that matter. It should be 2. And for 19, it should be 1. You can take insanely large values just to test it. Yep. Uh, yeah, these numbers are co prime. Yeah, another thing that whenever two numbers have the GCD as 1, that basically means they don't have any divisor or common divisor, then they are called co-prime numbers. So these two numbers are actually co-prime because they don't have any common divisors. And that's pretty much it for the entire session. I hope you understood the concepts. The concepts aren't that hard. And there would be resources beneath uh, in the description section. You, can, you should definitely go through them because unless and until you are practicing things on your own, you won't be able to learn, right? So the resources would be some blogs, and a few problems from CSS and code forces. If you still face any difficulties in solving those uh, problems or in reading those blogs, you can definitely ask me on the Discord server or you can ask the entire CP community on the Discord server. Everyone's quite helpful. So you won't feel alone in this entire journey of yours. Cool guys, thanks a lot for sticking till the end. I hope it added some value. Bye bye.